What's up guys, welcome back to another reaction video and today we're back with another KTO reaction. You guys keep suggesting this guy specifically and his videos are very good. And this video is meet the most athletic big man in NFL history. I'm, I mean, it's the name's pretty simple, it's probably by the title. But yeah, this is probably quite interesting. Because I mean, big guys going on long runs just seems crazy in itself, but it's going to be guys doing insane bits of skill, maybe insane runs, insane dribbles. And just some pure strength, which I love seeing a good barge of number of players. But yeah, I appreciate the suggestions. Appreciate the support. We've just hit 3k, which is wow. Can't believe it. And it just keeps going up. It's just it's like 100 subs each day. I don't understand how, but it just keeps happening. And I really do appreciate it. But yeah, if you guys keep enjoying the videos and keep suggesting, hopefully it'll keep up. But yeah, without talking anymore, let's get into the video. KTO man, this guy makes some really good videos. Some really good stories behind them as well. <laughs> oh wow, he looks massive. <laughs> look at him, look at his belly. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. People love the game of football. Much of it is due to the pure athleticism on display yeah. week in and 100%. week out. Seeing someone make an athletic play is like a great burger. It's always something you'll enjoy. And much like a giant burger, seeing a big man make an athletic play Look is all the more impressive. Meet Larry Allen. Oh, that looks Look good. This, Larry Six Allen, yeah. Three. Wow. Look at his belly. Look at his arms as well. This is going to be crazy, man. I can only tell. Offensive linemen don't get enough respect. The media focuses on hyping up the skill positions compared to the players in the trenches, which makes sense. People this is something I asked about before, like what players don't really get the, the, the respect that they deserve? Because I'm guessing this is more of a defensive player. And I always thought to myself, in every sport, defensive-minded players don't get the amount of respect and like sort of appreciation as the attacking players. This isn't just for American football. This is just sports in general. I never really, really understood because I mean, there's been some incredible defenders in every single sport or defensive-minded players, but they just aren't men like they aren't held up in the same sort of the same mind, the same level. Clips of great runs and amazing catches. But I'm guessing it's the same in this sport. make them more valuable than linemen. Now, years before Zeke was running behind this incredible offensive line, there was a man by the name of Emmett Smith, the all-time leader for rushing yards in a career. He is one of the best to ever do it. But when you're running behind a dude like this, you've got it pretty good. Larry Allen is as big of a freak physically fucking as hell. He is foot three, fucking 325, me. ran a 4.840, and claimed to have benched around seven. Oh my pounds. days! He was stronger than everybody, and he <laughs> knew it. The strongest man. Imagine facing this guy. Imagine how intimidated you'd feel. Because I mean, looking at look at him, looking at him ne like next to the other players on the pitch. Because NFL players aren't really small. There's not really any small small players, and he's dwarfing every single one of them. So imagine him next to a normal fucking sized guy. Wow. So defensive lineman Justin Tuck once told a story about Larry Allen. When he would line up against him in the trenches, Larry Allen would make a train whistle noise announcing to the defense they were running right behind him. Larry <laughs> Allen yes. would announce to you with a fake train whistle so intimidating. that he was coming straight to where you were going and then <laughs> we're not even know about it. What you gonna do? He must have caused some crazy injuries. Larry Allen is one of the greatest football players of all time. Six time all pro, eleven Pro Bowls, and a first ballot Hall of Famer. Whether it was throwing defensive linemen like ragdolls or telling them exactly <laughs> where the ball was going. No strength involved. Like, he's not using any force. He's just using, like, he's not even trying. He's just sort of, with, with, with ease, just pushing them to the side. But there was a single moment during his career that truly stands out. This is one of the most impressive things that I have ever seen. December 19th, 1994. Good 25 a late years ago. season NFC matchup between the Cowboys and the Saints. The Saints are trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. And going against the dominant Cowboys, they need a few things to go their way. 
early in the second quarter, they get that chance. The pass was intercepted by Darian Connor, and to describe this man as a player, he stood at 250 pounds. He wow. was known for his speed off the edge with pretty solid sack numbers, and he was in the midst of the best season of his career, but he was not known for picking off the quarterback. In fact, this was his only interception of his entire career. Wow. And he had a serious chance of taking it to the house. That's oh, crazy. By the way, he's got some wheels. In high school, the dude finished second in the 100 in the state final. And with a rolling start, he's just got to beat Troy Aikman and a couple offensive So lines. this guy is like an absolute unit himself. I'm guessing this is the guy that he's going to end up tackling or intercepting. But what I was trying to say is this guy is big. He's an absolute athlete. But he's fast as well and he's strong. So I'm excited to see like these two combine and see what happens. Jesus, he looks fast. Wow. How has he kept up with him? How is he? Like the laws of physics, look at his legs, bro. Wow. I guess you've really got to understand how like crazy that really is too. Larry Allen. Who appreciate it by 75 pounds didn't let him get away the saints pounds. are celebrating and the announcers don't even care they cannot believe what they just witnessed you might be thinking well larry allen had the angle he could have easily caught him but on the instant replay by the time connor was nearing top speed larry allen wow. was standing flat-footed just starting Jesus. to realize what had happened and get a running start at it. look at this folks Six he looks three, rapid. He almost seems like a 325 pounds in stone. I'll search that after this video because I. So I'll search it now. 325 pounds in stone. Stone. Um, pounds to stone. 325. Sorry, I'm doing this. I need to. I need to really appreciate and realize. Twi oh my God! He's 23 stone. Oh my days, 23 stone, that's two of me, I'm like 11 and a half stone, this guy is massive. Created a player on Madden, someone you- Put it into um, context, Anthony Joshua, the boxer, he's about 16.5 stone, he's 6 foot 7, this guy's 7 stone more. You'd mess around with and give maxed out stats. He'd be too and heavy to be a heavyweight in boxing. That, moving that fast seems impossible. Now I realize how mad that is. Was as improbable as they come. Growing up in Compton, he almost died from meningitis as a baby. Oh wow. And at the age of 11, Larry's younger brother was getting beat up by the neighbors. He's a proper so warrior, yeah. Larry ran over there and tried to help his brother. And when he got over there, the neighbor ended up stabbing Larry Allen multiple times. Oh shit. In the words of the man himself. He got me in the head and the shoulder. It was really scary when my mom told me I had to go fight him. <laughs> And she's gonna take me to find him or go fight. Three days it took me to beat this guy. I finally won. <laughs> he moved a lot as a kid. He ended up going to five different middle schools. To get away from the streets for a year, his mom sent him to live with his grandma in Napa Valley, which to him was a completely different world. On the first day of school, he met a kid by the name of Steve Hatton. After becoming good friends, Steve invited Larry to eat dinner with his family. And after learning about his story, his family told him that if he ever needed a place to stay, they were there for him. And Yo. prior to his senior year, he called up the Haddon family and ended up moving in with them. That's the dad sick. of the family said, quote, he was part of the family, just like our kids. After never even- I love stuff like that, man. He's got a proper story to tell. He's struggled and that, the people who allowed him in the family, Yo, you've got to really appreciate until 11th grade. He took it serious when he got back to Napa his senior year, and he was truly something special. Even though he was clearly a rare talent, he couldn't go to any D1 schools. In fact, he didn't even graduate high school. He ended up wow. going to a junior college and earned his GED. The coach of his JC, Craig Rigsby, was a major influence on Larry. He helped him earn his GED, taught him how to drive a car, write checks, and manage money. Is there a lot of help when Larry there? Allen showed up wearing sweats and flip-flops to their football banquet, Craig Rigsby ended up showing him how to buy clothes. 
After his two years at the JC were up, Larry moved back to Compton to continue his education. Well, that didn't happen. He never even enrolled. That's when his next mentor came into the picture. Pardon me if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, Frank Scalercio. He was the coach at Sonoma State, and he wanted to help out. He even helped him earn his actual high school diploma through an adult school, and ended up getting him enrolled into Sonoma State. In one of the oddest routes of education, in the coach's words, in August... Yeah, I'm guessing in, because I know in um, college football, or like football and education, the education is like the most important part. And I feel like, I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to pass the exams, the theory, to actually be allowed to play in like the college football NFL. So the fact that this guy managed to make it through all these ups and downs is, I mean, congratulations, but it's also a big like show of how much you really do need support around you. And this guy had it, which is really- Graduated from the adult school in the morning. I got his transcripts to Sonoma State that afternoon and he was on the practice field. The Yo. rest was history. Two years later, he would be drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. A man who needed the most help to get to the NFL would end up helping the Cowboys the most for about a decade. Oh, we played for a long time. Rough and as tough as nails. Hugh probably shouldn't mess with them. Even nah. if you're on his own team. If you're a kicker and Larry Allen's blocking for you, you better not miss a field goal. Oh shit! These guys, this guy's videos, man. I'll tell you what. Shout out to KTO. I'm gonna. You guys seem to really enjoy the reactions, but I just really enjoy reacting to these. These videos are just so they're so like simple to understand, but it tells you a lot about each individual player. Like the past few reaction videos I've done, I had no clue who the players even were, and seeing these stories, it's really like making me appreciate it more. Yeah, man, KTO, appreciate that. Appreciate the suggestions. You know what to do. Suggest more. I've said this probably like 10 times this video, but suggest more and I'll react to them. I'm still working through a lot of reactions because there's a lot you guys have done. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, subscribe and peace.